assistant with Quest for Completion. Uh, but the most important people you're going to hear from uh, this afternoon are our four panelists. And uh, Gabby McCutcheon, um, Gabby is waving to you. She's the coordinator for the Teaching Learning Center and Faculty of Development at Durham Tech Community College in uh, North Carolina. We've got uh, Charlie Mathers at the end, uh, who's Associate Professor of Mathematics at Northampton Community College, Pennsylvania. And Warren Yarborough, Dean on the outline and an adjunct instructor at the Orangeburg Calhoun Technical College, South Carolina. And last but not least, Wilma Doolin, Faculty Director, Office of Institutional Effectiveness, Yakima Valley Community College in the state of Washington. And unfortunately, Wilma's name is not on your program, so if you want to note her name, take the chance while it's on the screen. I uh, wanted just to uh, do a very, very quick review of what Quest is all about. Our ultimate goal is about student success. That's what all of this is about. And so just sort of put that firmly in the back of your minds because everything that we're talking about is not necessarily going to mention students immediately, but the goal of the whole effort is student success. Uh, some of our largest challenges are getting enough broad faculty and staff engagement, getting them talking together about the things that they can do better together, college-wide collaboration. Some of the institutions are so dispersed. It's no small challenge to bring people together. As all of you know, these things make it very difficult to have face-to-face -face conversations and confer on issues that can spark ideas of ways that we can do things better. Um, and then something that we struggle with, and you'll hear something about this, it's the definition of interpretation of engagement. Um, the Achieving Your Dream uh, uh, Completion Grant was generously funded by the Walmart Foundation. We're immensely uh, grateful to them because they have provided su the support to the colleges. Their grants were 100000 each, and they were granted to those who were Achieving Your Dream colleges who had achieved uh, leadership college status. And so as leader colleges, um, they qualified to take some of the work that they had already done and take it further down the road and very fast too. It was a short track, 27 month deadline. Um, two primary goals were to deepen faculty and staff engagement and to prepare institutions to provide support to other institutions. That's the, that's the key to what, what this is all about. This is just to show you how broadly um, scattered the colleges are across the college and highlighted ones of those who are represented here. And there should be coming some uh, handouts of all of this so that you will get this at least later. Um, achieving your dream, uh, press completion grants include requiring certain engagement strategies. There were things that they had to do. Have a big meeting. Now, what a big meeting is, uh, sometimes a, con a convocation, but in some institutions didn't have enough space on campus to have a convocation. Others had um, money problems. Others had union problems. Others had all kinds of reasons why that was not the place and the time where it was possible to get people together. So th there's a variety of different things that, that have been overcome and, and have pre prevented cha presented challenges, but they have been very effectively addressed in most cases. Um, student success at all campus rallies, these have taken various forms that have been very interesting and exciting. Anytime you get students involved, you know you're in a special spot. And then to oversee all of the acti activities at Quest, um, they have uh, formed thinking teams, essentially composed of people from all across the institution. So that if there are four campuses, there are the campuses are represented, staff are represented, staff um, and faculty, and above all, bringing in the adjunct faculty and ensuring that they have a chance to be heard in, in discussions about students. They care just as much as the rest of the institution, but they don't always get the chance or the timetable or the locations don't always work for them. So sometimes there were multiple meetings. Uh, but they were managed and arranged by the thinking team. Uh, so uh, colleges have been allowed to explore any areas of student success that they could that could be furthered by engagement. Um, so I'm going to 
change now and ask our panelists to, to speak and uh, I'll turn in the, uh, the digital already on. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to ask the first question and that is, what is the focus of your work and how so far have you defined engagement? What is the focus of what you're doing and how have you had to overcome barriers in doing this work? So I'll give you a couple of minutes apiece to address that. It's perhaps a multiple part question, but it all belongs together. How did you go about the work? What were your focus of engagement in doing this?
as a as a as a parent that who uh, I, I don't know what how, how it works at, at at Walmart, but I know that they don't have the kind of expectation that parents are going to raise a lot of extended extended classes on uh, issues and projects. But for us, uh, one of the things that uh, just just to get started in this was uh, having them simply come in to to a Zoom meeting that we have with staff and and, and talk about the right work and what we need to work on. So what we ended up doing as a team was taking things to uh, the courses that uh, at gateway courses where students go to class and work and to in-learning courses. And it's kind of interesting how in these two groups of us that uh, that, that think separately, we ended up coming up, coming to this this conclusion that we should uh, look at things uh, that happen early in the school um, and look at the uh, what's the skills that need to be trained early in the school and uh, look at the the concepts and the problems that we need to be uh, that we need to get to in order to have a Um, thanks, all of you. And now, since this is about engagement, we would really like to engage you in the conversation. We know that many, or if not most of you, uh, are engaged in the work itself. And so we'd like you to group yourselves in fours or fives according to your seating arrangement and perhaps have about, about four to five minutes of discussion answering the question, what are the barriers that you see at your colleges and then we'll hear back from you and see if there are any common themes that you would like to share with us. Um, and then we can have some comments afterwards. We will be going on to other questions, but we want to keep you part of this conversation. So it's your turn. Um, pick your groups. And um, what barriers do you see at your colleges to engagement by all these parties? Uh, the next question that I have is this one. I'm going to see what we have next. The most effective strategy here.
ready for you. Or when we want. Okay, everybody. Hello. Well, that was some lively discussion. Um, I'm not quite sure how many groups we have. Can you hear in the back of the room? Can you hear in the back of the room? Okay, we'd like to hear from you. And let's start at the back of the room. I'm, uh, if, well, it's difficult to assess exactly how many groups you have, so maybe uh, one of your number would just stand up and in a couple of sentences just tell us what were the key themes that came up for you in your discussion. Let's start over in this corner. And speak up and I'll repeat, I'll try to repeat the question back to you so, that, so everybody can hear it. But shout out. Okay, defer to somebody else. Absolutely understandable for those of you who may not have heard of it, administrative instability and the, the, the difficulty of trying to think about moving forward when you don't know where, where your, the support is coming from and where you're trying to think. Another group back here. What were any, was it something different? If you had the same, just pass on to the next group. If you had Thinking of it from a staff development point of view, that kind of, okay. All right, thank you very much. That's another key point, capacity, and uh, how you invest in your people to do this kind of work so that they can have consistency across uh, the, the entire organization. Another group, next, next group forward. Who has a good, loud voice? Come on. definition of engagement and the levels of it is something that everybody's interested in. Let's go to this side of the room. Somebody with a big booming voice. <laughs> Just, just mention two things about adjunct faculty. One is when they have been involved, even if it, there hasn't been a case situation, their pleasure of being able to talk about instructional, pedagogical things with their peers was a reward to them in itself, and they were very grateful for it. Not everybody came, but that was a definite response. The other was the finding along the way by one institution that they had been sending out communications to adjunct faculty wondered why there was no response that were not supplied and then found that in fact there was a technological problem. They weren't even receiving the messages in the first place. So there are many, many reasons why you don't get engagement. Sometimes you have to make sure the loop is closed. Uh, next group, here.
that, that business of focusing has been absolutely crucial. And uh, uh, taking things step by step, finding that focus, and finding out where the biggest impact can be with the resources that you have, and then going forward from there. That's not an easy uh, sort of step to take. Uh, what about this paper over here? initiations that institutions will take a look at and raise a room right over your head. It's really a contractual issue that can present barriers. Uh, they can be addressed, but it takes time and it takes a will. So, but uh, thank you for bringing it up. We haven't heard from the center of the room. Anybody have anything to add on these? Yes. finding new ways of doing things in empathetic ways. These are all tremendously important, but let's thank you all. Um, we'll come back to you with some more discussion in a minute. Uh, we'd like to move on to the next question, and I'd like uh, to hear each of our panelists speak to the most effective strategies that they've worked with so far. What, what has worked the best? Would you like to start off?
because we're a society that is uh, affected by the internet and social media and things like that, and why we have turn again. Uh, we're going to ask you if you will form your group and uh, discuss for just a few minutes what strategies have worked at your colleges where you've tried to engage others across the lines that we've been talking about. So if you form your groups, uh, well you've got five minutes. delivered
tap that microphone so I can get there. Tap it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I have your attention, please? I know it's a little difficult. <laughs> Okay, we'd like to hear from you uh, in just a couple of sentences, and I'm going to go to those that we really didn't hear from, those who are sort of tucked around this divider in the room. Um, and uh, we'd like to hear if there's anything that uh, you have particularly found that has been effective in uh, uh, promoting cross-college collaboration. Um, how about this group here? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't see. Which, yeah, what strategies work? I, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We, I need to put the uh, slide on. Um, yes, yeah, so let's hear from you on the question that people have found. Uh, what strategies work in your case? Just in a couple of, just a, a capsule or so. Anybody? So really get, getting, am, am I hearing you, am I hearing you correctly, that really is getting to know each other? Yeah, that's been a very real part of it. So that's been a response to many of the people in this room. How about, uh, let's see, uh, we didn't hear from this group in the middle of the room before. So uh, what do you have to share over here? You need the administrative support at the right level. Yeah. And that just, yeah. And that ties very much back to the point that we had earlier on about having that systematic long term support for administration. Let's do that. I understand there's somebody in the back that I haven't seen. Hand I have not seen. Uh, who is it who's come? Yes, yes, sir. Well, it's really impressive how much can be contributed at any and every level of the institution. And that communication just is the glue that holds the whole thing together. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Yes. broad conversations and collect the data. That's, that's, <laughs> that's very fortunate to be able to get there. Um, anywhere else in the room that we haven't heard from that you'd like to share, like to make some comments on this? Anybody I'm missing? Okay, then let's move on and we'll have um, our panelists speak to uh, what is your college identified as an increasing uh, collaboration across the college, and in doing your, the work, have you found any policies that had to be modified or changed along the way? Um, would you like to yeah, start at your end, Charlie? Yep. Yeah. Um, well, first I would say that, uh, as, as you both mentioned, uh, part of the grant was uh, opening the day uh, conversation, uh, getting people from everybody who came from the Florida Film Critic, um, people like Stephen Spurgeon came, Things like that, and um, I remember that after that, there was—I was approached by a lot of people that were that were kind of ex 
excited about getting an opportunity to be the guy on TV. Um, it's one of the earliest things that I ever had an idea of doing. Um, and another thing we did was we also tried to make sure that we fostered off the fact that we had that kind of pride in terms of leading the team. Um, and one of the things we got to um, this is from Mike Pinto, who was on the show that I had on season two. Um, also, there was a uh, learning session that we had with the team that was really cool that we got to be part of one of the training sessions. Um, and this was our conversation with the team about the series that I mentioned earlier that we discovered that uh, as tennis coaches, we actually kind of need to have conversations with leaders on the floor and kind of get their perspective about the team and the sport and things like that. But there was the struggling that we did that um, that was that kind of learning that we got to have with the team. Yeah, I think that um, the fact that we had so many people from all over the world participate in this was really cool. And I think that that was one of the things that really made it really special for us is that we had so many people from all over the world participate in this. Um, but I think that we did have some struggles in terms of getting the word out to the team and getting them to kind of get on board with it. Um, but one of the things that we did was we did a lot of working? Okay. Um, I'm going to start at the level of policy. In January 2014, we started our Global Sports Summit, and then since then we've started to work with all sports leaders to kind of create the culture that we want to see in the sport. So that form of just kind of get the word out there kind of thing is is the one that that we kind of started uh, this time period to kind of help us. So what that does is it lets those moms who go to this little corner of the island and can't go to the next building or work at home Goals out. We have to keep them engaged. Procedurally, we have changed a number of things.
from you now, if you uh, have some doubts, after you've had a chance to discuss what has worked in your colleges uh, to have cross-campus collaboration, and have you encountered any policy changes that have been necessary to address along the way? 
go to a whole new group and we'll have five minutes discussion.
what you come up with from your various groups, and we'll start at the front of the room this time. Let's start over here. What what can you share with us? bringing in people from all over the campus and we'll have that conversation. Um, okay, uh, another group. Let, let's hear from the speech here. At this side of the table? Did everybody hear that in the back? Okay. Okay, yes. Thank you. That's, that's very good. It's involving everybody. You know, sometimes pe branch people may be the first people of the students in Congress. Uh, every single person on your campuses uh, has a, a value in the lives of the students and in the life of the institution. So that, that's very, very, very affirming to hear that from your fellow member of the institution. Thank you. Um, any comments from the back over the room? I haven't heard from you yet. Putting things on, on the institutional calendar well ahead of time when you know that there are things that you want to do so they don't slip or get crowded out by something else. Something as small uh, and technical as that can really, really make a difference. And uh, you know, preserving space and deciding where you can go and where you can leave. And that has helped all of these folks at different times. And uh, I'm sure it has you too. Um, let, let's go to the central table. Very interesting business, substantial million. Yeah, be interested to see what your follow-up data are. That would be exciting. Um, there's a group that's sort of on the periphery of this table. I don't know if you've been a separate group or if you've had some things. That
key. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Makes a huge difference. Um, will you assist us both over here? You can step in. Could, well, let's hear from you. We haven't heard from you before. Oh, okay. about anybody else in the back of the room that needs some voices that haven't been heard? We'd love to hear from anybody who has something that they would like to say regarding the discussion we've had. Well, now we're going to open it up, and you've heard from four very experienced people, and uh, they've had good experiences, less than, you know, perfect experiences. They've learned from those. They've moved on. They've redesigned. They've hit some kernel changing and uh, and refining and focusing and doing really good work. And I know that you're doing that too. So I'd like to open up uh, to any questions or comments that you have. Um, you you have a lot of, a wealth of experience um, in that side of the room. And we'd like to, to, like to have you share, uh, ask questions, comment, anything you have to say. Yes. question. Who is the, how you rearrange things? Who would like to field that question? <laughs> the advising process.
questions, comments, ideas, thoughts? Students can, can really, really help. That's the, the, the only difficulty there is that we always have that plan to replace them because, of course, they're going to move on. Uh, but in every institution that has used the, uh, uh, the, the students, and, and it's a great growing experience for them too. There's so much the students learn from it. So it's to their benefit and it's definitely to the institution's benefit as well. Any other comments, thoughts, ideas? Yes. And actually, I was present at some of the uh, second round meetings that were held at that campus, and the thing that impressed me was the, the real excitement of those who were there, and they did not want to stop. When the time was over, they were still at it. They were around the tables, and we had another chance to talk about these things for a while. It was a very exciting um, pair of events that, uh, that I attended there. And um, uh, so your, your point is well taken. Anybody else? Here, friends, you have anything you'd like to comment about? Sorry about some of the technological delay at the beginning, but I'd like to thank all of you for coming. But above all, I'd like to thank our presenters. <laughs> and thank you so much for your comments and ideas and thoughts. We appreciate them very much.